Hey guys, good morning and welcome back again to your Run Academy Read English channel. I believe all of you are doing great, having a good time. So guys, you know, mole concept, which is the most phobic chapter of chemistry for, I will say, more than 90% of the students, right? Why is that? Because when a class 11 student completes the mole concept, still he will be unable to solve all the questions of mole concept. Because this is the chapter which involves the topics like stoichiometry, limiting reagent, yield, purity, etc, etc. And in those topics, any sort of reaction can be given to you, right? That reaction can be from P-block, that reaction can be from uh, d and block elements, perfect. Sometimes reaction won't be given to you and you will have to predict the reaction, perfect. That is the reason why a lot of students, majority of the students consider this particular chapter the toughest chapter. So, till you get the hold of your complete chemistry, right? Once your complete chemistry is done, once you have complete the whole syllabus of the chemistry, then I'm pretty much sure, right? Your mole concept chapter, you'll find easier, right? Because you'll be having the holds on the reactions of the P block, D and F block elements from which, uh, particularly in the mole concept, the reactions are involved. And in this particular session, I'm going to show you one question, right? Which I believe majority of the students won't be able to solve on their own, right? So let's have a look on the toughest question of the mole concept and I'm pretty much sure a lot of students won't be able to solve this on their own if their D and F block elements or P block elements if they have not studied that before, right? So let's have a look on the question of the mole. Look at the question guys. See, if you look at the question and if you would have recently seen the videos of my mole concept which I have posted on the channel and by the way tonight at 7 p.m. we are going to have the last session of the mole concept. Do not miss that. That's going to be super important, right? And if you have watched the earlier sessions of the mole, then I'm pretty much sure you will be able to solve this particular question, provided you, are, you have studied your D and F block elements uh, already. Yeah? Look at the question carefully, guys. If you look at the question carefully, have a look. The treatment of an aqueous solution of 3.74 grams of CuNO3 twice with excess of Ki. So first of all, no reaction is given. You have to predict the reaction. And it's completely given in your NCRT in the D and F block elements, right? So first of all, as for the question, the treatment of an aqueous solution of 3.74 grams of CuNO3 twice with the excess of Ki results in a brown solution. Results in a brown solution along with the formation of precipitate. Along with the formation of precipitate. So first of all, what exactly happens? The reaction which I'm going to write right over here on the screen that is given in your DNA block element. So no need to not, I mean, you need not to worry about it. Perfect. See guys, as per the question, your CuNO3 whole twice, right? We are treating it with potassium iodide, right? Excess of potassium iodide. We are treating it with the excess of potassium iodide. Perfect. Now what gets formed? What gets formed? First of all, when, you, when your CuNO3 is treated with potassium iodide, what is the first thing which will get formed? you will be getting CuI, right? Which is your precipitate, which is your precipitate. As in the question they're mentioning, CuNO3 twice with the excess of Ki results in the brown solution along with the precipitate. So this is your precipitate over here. Now, what is the brown solution? What is the brown solution? We will get the idea in some time. Have a look. CuNO3 twice plus Ki. It will first of all lead to the formation of CuI, right? And with CuI, you will be getting I2, and with I2, you'll be getting KNO3 as well. So this is the reaction first of all, right? But in this reaction, only one thing we are getting over here, right? We are getting the precipitate. Now, where is the brown solution which they are telling in the question? Now, my dear students, use your brain a bit. Use your brain a bit. First of all, precipitate we got, but where is the brown solution? Where is the brown solution? The I2 which gets formed over here. Over here, you had taken Ki in excess, right? Ki is taken in excess. I2 got formed. The I2 which gets formed, the I2 which gets formed, it is going to interact with Ki again and it will lead to the formation of Ki3. And this Ki3, it is your brown colored. It is your brown colored, right? So I2 which is getting formed over here, right? That's interacting with Ki and leading to the formation of Ki3. See, this particular reaction is already balanced. Look at this reaction. Is it balanced? The first reaction is not at all balanced. So let's try to balance this reaction. This becomes two times. This becomes two times, right? 
Now, how many iodine do you have? Two and two, four. So let's make it four on this side and let's make it four on this side. I believe the reaction is balanced now. Yes, the reaction is balanced now. Okay. So in the first reaction, what is happening? Precipitate is getting formed and iodine. Iodine is interacting further with Ki. It is leading to the formation of Ki3. Perfect. But dear students, if you add them up, when you add these reactions, what exactly you'll find out? Have a look. Understand. If you will exactly add these two reactions, what you guys are going to get over here. If you understand it carefully. See guys, when you add these two reactions, this I2 and this I2, it gets cancelled out, right? So I'll be left with two times CuNO3 twice. CuNO3 twice. Four times Ki plus Ki makes it five times Ki, right? Makes it five times Ki, it gives. It gives your precipitate, that is two times CuI. Right? It gives the precipitate. Apart from the precipitate, what do we get? We get this brown solution, which is Ki3, which is Ki3. And at the same time, what do we get? We get four times KNO3 as well. So now, if you look at this particular reaction, now I feel the first statement which is given that is properly completed over here. Your CuNO3 hold twice, it is interacting with Ki, leading to the formation of precipitate. And with the precipitate, what do you get? You get the brown solution. So this is my reaction till now. Okay, now as per the question, if you think logically, I'm not reading the other part of the statement. I'm not reading the other part of the question yet. First of all, let me have a look on this particular reaction, what it's saying. As per the question, you were given with 3.74 grams of CuNO3 twice. You were given with uh, 3.74 grams of CuNO3 twice. So basically, how many moles of CuNO3 twice do we have? How many moles of CuNO3 twice do we have? Given mass of CuNO3 twice divided by molar mass, right? The value comes out to be 0.02. So basically, we are starting with 0.02 moles of CuNO3 twice, right? Now, if you use the stoichiometry, see guys, before using the stoichiometry, look at the second statement. Passing H2S through this brown solution, passing H2S through this brown solution gives another precipitate X. The amount of X in grams will be. So basically, the Ki3 which is getting formed over here, right? You are passing it. You are going to interact this Ki3 with H2S. Right? When Ki3 interacts with H2S, another precipitate is getting formed. We have to calculate how much amount of that precipitate is getting formed. Understand? Understand? As per the question, if you look at the stoichiometry, the coefficient here is 2. The coefficient here is 1. See, 2 moles are giving us 1 mole of Ki3. Therefore, 1 mole will be giving us 1 by 2 moles of Ki3. And 0 0.02 moles will be giving us 1 by 2 into 0 0.02. That comes out to be 0.01 moles. So, from this particular reaction, how many moles of Ki3 are being formed? 0.01 moles of Ki3 are being formed. Now, whatever Ki3 is being formed here, remember the sequential reactions which I taught you in the mole concept a few days back. Whatever Ki3 is getting formed over here, that Ki3 is further passed into what? That Ki3 is passed through H2S, right? And when Ki3 is passed through H2S, this again one reaction which you'll be studying in the other chapters apart from the mole concept, right? See guys, when Ki3 interacts with H2S, what do we get? First of all, you get sulfur, which is my precipitate here, right? With sulfur, you'll be getting Hi. With sulfur, you'll be getting Hi. Sulfur, uh, your Hi, and you'll be getting Ki as well. Okay, you'll be getting Ki as well. Now look at the reaction if this reaction is balanced. So if this is 2 here, I'll make it 2, right? Now check, is the reaction balanced? We have 3 iodine on this side, 3 iodine on this side, 2 hydrogen, 2 hydrogen, sulfur, sulfur, potassium, potassium, right? Now, in through this particular reaction, how many moles of Ki3 got formed? 0 0.01. Now guys, look at the stoichiometry, right? 1 mole of Ki3 is giving us 1 mole of sulfur. So if 1 mole Ki3 is giving us 1 mole sulfur as precipitate, Therefore, therefore, 0 0.01 moles of Ki3, which got formed in the earlier reaction, right? It's going to give us 0 0.01 moles of sulfur through this particular reaction. But was I supposed to calculate the moles of precipitate? No, I was supposed to calculate the mass of precipitate. So what is the mass of precipitate over here? What is the mass of sulfur? Sulfur is the precipitate. So what is its mass? So moles multiplied by molar mass, right? The value comes out to be 0. 2 grams. So 0.32 grams of 
final precipitate sulfur gets formed in this particular reaction. My dear students, now if you are studying mole concept for the first time, definitely you will find this question tough because you would have never seen these sort of reactions. But I believe if you have seen the last lecture of my mole concept, wherein I have discussed the sequential reactions, right? So basically I'm using the sequential reaction concept over here. So in the first reaction, what is happening? Your precipitate is getting formed, right? Now I was supposed to get the brown solution as well. The I2 which you got from here, that further interacts with Ki, leads to the formation of brown as well. If you add these two reactions, this is a complete reaction. So you know three twice with Ki. First of all, it forms the precipitate with that brown solution. Now uh, through this particular reaction, I got to know how many moles of this brown solution are getting formed. How many moles of Ki3 are getting formed. Now the question is saying the Ki3 further interacts with what? The Ki3 further interacts with H2S and it forms the precipitate again. That is X and the precipitate here is sulfur. Perfect. And through this particular reaction, you exactly got to know the moles of sulfur formed. And once you get the moles of sulfur formed, that means you easily got the mass of sulfur formed too. Right? So it is very... I mean, it's very common students find mole concept tough, but, but it will be tough till you complete the other chapters of your chemistry, like D and F, like P block elements, etc, etc, where a lot of reactions are there. Once you have complete hold on D and F block elements, P block elements, right? Once you remember all those reactions completely, right? Even in coordination chemistry, once you complete that too, then your mole concept, it becomes easier for you. Right, provided you remember all the things which are there given in your NCRT in case of your DNA block elements, P block elements, as well as coordination chemistry. Right, so a lot of students, I believe, won't be able to solve this sort of equation once completing the mole concept only. Right, so you need not to worry. Let's complete the other chapters of chemistry as well, and definitely after that, you will be able to solve these sort of questions on your own. Right, perfect. So, people, this I found a good question, so I wanted to share with you, and at the same time. Uh, one quick announcement for all the NEET 2025 aspirants who have not made their mind, I mean, who were till now in the dilemma whether uh, to go for the re-NEET or to start preparing for NEET 2025, particularly for you, on 26th of July, we are starting the Phoenix Pro Batch, wherein we, an Academy NEET English team, we are going to train you personally, right? And the best features in this particular batch, which will make sure that all of you cross the 700 marks, all the best features are incorporated here in the Phoenix Pro Batch. What are the best features? First of all, your whole syllabus will be getting completed till December end, followed by two months of revision. On every alternate Sundays, you'll be writing the test and we are going to provide the test. We will be providing you the best, finest study material across the country, right, for the need preparation, right, which has been recently designed, taken into consideration that cutoffs have been increasing. Now students have to cross the 700 marks. So in order to keep that thing in mind, we have uh, curated that study material, right? And Apart from that, you get the access to the SRG program as well. SRG is the special rankers group uh, from which uh, every year an academy gets the single digit, double digit ranks. You'll be having the access to the SRG uh, program as well. Exclusive mentorship by the educators, which you'll be getting with us, right? Similarly, in-class doubt solving that all of you must be knowing. A batch test leaderboards with exciting giveaways, right? So after every alternate Sundays, you'll be writing the test, right? And after writing the test, whosoever is going to be the top 10, top 20, etc., etc., they'll be getting the giveaways as well. And there will be guidance sessions from the NEET UG toppers, basically. So whosoever has been uh, the single digit, double digit ranker earlier in the NEET examination, you'll be having separate sessions with all of them as well, so that you get to know about, the, about their insights. They let you know how uh, they tackled everything in this journey. And uh, definitely, those guidance sessions will, will be helpful for all of you. And one more best part, you are going to get the access to the All India Test Series from an academy as well. So a lot of students, they suffer in order to write the test series. They exactly do not know what is the authentic test series. So here in this particular batch, you are getting, apart from the regular test, which will happen on alternate Sundays, apart from that, you'll be having the access to the All India Test Series as well, wherein you can compete with all the students across the country. And you'll get to know your ranks with the help of the AIR predictor, All India Rank Predictor. Uh, with the help of that, you'll be having the idea of the ranks which you'll be getting through this particular test series, right? And you know, the batch is starting on 26th of July and this is going to be the team of Avengers who is going to train you in this particular batch. Me and HSP sir will be taking care of chemistry, Yavar sir will be taking care of physics, your Ambika ma'am will be taking care of your complete biology. The batch is starting on, uh, the batch is exactly starting on 26th, right, of this particular month. So I would want you guys, if you really want to cross that 700 marks, then definitely this is going to be the batch for all of you. In order to enroll into this particular batch, there's a link 
which is given in the description box of the video, right? You just have to click on that link. Let me show it to you. So first of all, for example, if you look at the description, there's a link, one year need UG subscription. Click on the link. Once you click on the link, automatically you'll be directed to this particular page, wherein you can either choose a plus subscription or the iconic subscription. Now, what is the difference between plus and iconic? In plus, you get study material in the form of PDF. In iconic, you get study material in the form of booklets and those booklets are delivered to your houses basically, right? Okay, and in iconic, you get frequently the mentorship sessions with the educators as well as the uh, last or last need rankers, right? So here you have to click on 12 months, click on proceed to pay. Once you click on proceed to pay, right? Here you have to put your mobile number on which you'll be getting the OTP or you can continue with the email. And right now you're getting the batch exactly at 5999. So if you really are willing to crack this particular examination with an amazing score with 700 plus marks, then get trained by the teachers who have produced these ranks, right? That's why we have created this particular batch for all of you, wherein all the parameters which are required Crack this examination with 700 plus marks. All those parameters are incorporated here in this particular batch, right? It's a last live batch, last fully live batch, which we are going to start in the Unacademy platform on 26th of this particular month. So get enrolled as soon as possible. Let's meet in the batches. And the best part is after enrolling into this particular batch, you'll be having the access to all the batches of Unacademy, be it Hindi batch, English batch, English batch, NEET 2025 batch, NEET 2026 batch, right, JE 2025, JE 2026, you'll be having access to all those batches absolutely free of cost after enrolling into this one. So get enrolled as soon as possible. Uh, with this, I'll be taking leave. Take care. God bless you all and love you all guys. Bye-bye.